Hi, in this video I would like to show you the PC Junior. While it is booting up, let me talk about a bit about this small machine. So what is PC Junior? After the success of the original IBM PC, the IBM decided to build something for the small offices and home users. This was the market where Apple II excelled, so I think it was the main intention to gather market share from Apple and Commodore and other home computer vendors. So what management did, they decided to cripple the IBM PC, reuse its knowledge in one hand and in the other hand expand it for home users. So the engineers had a difficult task to do both of them at the same time and keep the cost in a reduced level. As a result, they built a computer which is smaller than the original IBM PC but bigger than most of the home computers. Let's say it is somewhere in between. So the base system had 64 kilobyte. It was driven by the same CPU as the IBM PC, so 8088, running on 4.77 MHz. The base model had no floppy drive, so it could use either a cassette tape or cards to start the programs. This version simply failed on the market, so most of the machines were expanded. The memory was expanded to 128 kilobytes, had also a floppy drive and most of the time additional monitor. The users could hook the system to your TV, but it was much better to hook up to your CGA monitor. Let me run a few benchmarks to show you the speed, or is it better to say the slowness of the system to you. Both versions of the Landmark Speed Test shows a very slow computer, so it is slower than the original PC or the later XT. The reason behind it has no DMA, so when I'm pushing the keyboard buttons, you can see how the system is really slowing down. By the way, the keyboard, it worth few more words. I do not have the original Chiclet keyboard. This is the second version, so the key is a bit better, but still it is not up to the IBM standards. The fun part, it is using infrared to transmit the data. So I can say I have a wireless keyboard from 84. That's just great, right? In the reality not, because it is, uh, well, how can I say? So, it's hard to use. Okay, it's better than the ZX Spectrum, but a C64 has a much better keyboard, as well as an Apple II is, is really much better. To reach the function keys, I have to push multiple keys at the same time. Also, it is, it is really sensitive to pushing multiple buttons at the same time. So, it is not the best keyboard, it's just okay-ish. But the PC Junior has a bigger issue, which is compatibility. It is easy to demonstrate how IBM built a PC which is not compatible with the PC. So this is PC Junior, but not compatible with the original PC. Sysinfo from Norton Utilities is not the only one which is crashing when I try to test something. After this nice panic message, let's jump into the self-test of PC Junior. You can reach it pressing Alt, Control and Insert at the same time. And let's run a few tests. While the screen test is running, let me talk about the two advantages of PC Junior. So the first one is the new graphics adapter. It is an evolution of the old CGA, so it is using the same RGBI interface. CGA was able to display four colors on 320 by 200. PC Junior can use the full palette, so 16 colors on the same resolution. If you remember CGA games and the ugly colors, then yeah, it is really a big advantage. The PC Junior also got a sound chip. I do not say it's a sound card, but it is much better than the PC speaker. After the display, let's test the sound generator chip as well.
PC Junior also has inbuilt basic. If there is no boot media, this one is starting up. I think most of us started with something like that in the 80s when we received the first computer. So let me type it in and then start it. After basic, it is time to check out the games. It is possible to split all those games to three big groups. The first group is running from cartridges. The second group is special software designed for PC Junior, so let's call them booty balls, so PC Junior booty balls, while the third group contains all the common DOS games. Let's start with the cartridge based games. My problem with these games is very simple. They are not really using all the features given by the PC Junior. In one hand, they are better than the normal CGA games, so they are not using those ugly colors. But it is very rare to see all the 16 available colors at the same time on the screen. Also, these games are not really using the sound capabilities of PC Junior. Maybe the reason behind is the lack of space. So those games were really small, so somewhere between 16 or 32 kilobytes. And while it makes possible to have multiple of those on a single floppy, so I'm not running them from cartridges, but from a floppy disk, in the other hand, they are really limited. So let me present just a handful of them for you.
After Pitfall, let's switch over to the second group. These games booting directly from a floppy disk, so they do not need any kind of operating system, so there is no DOS under the hood. They are interesting because most of them had a DOS version, but since there is more space on a floppy disk than on a cartridge, they are much more advanced. The first example is King's Quest. If you just take a look at the colors and the sound, it is obviously much better than the DOS version. After fiddling around, I would like to present my favorite PC bootloader. I think this is really presenting all the advanced features of PC Junior. After the games tailored to PC Junior, we reached the third group. So all those old CGA DOS games. To be honest, I included these games only because I wanted to present the drawbacks or the dark side of PC Junior. What do I mean that? Well, I may say these games are not running on PC Junior, but they are, let's say, crawling. As they are not using the additional colors or music, they are not better than anything running on an XT or original PC, but they are at least slower. If you take a look at the cores of Prehistoric, well, it is not nice or ugly, how can I say that? And also it takes ages to load the game, so, well. But at least this one is running pretty fair, so it is playable. As soon as I'm switching over to Prince of Persia, it is changing. Well, the sound is not really bad. The graphics is just CGA, but the movement, well, it is really, really slow. How Prince is just running, well, it is hard to play because it is so slow. So it is, let's say, sluggish.
But if I switch over to the last game, so Indiana Jones 3, I'm just showing you the intro. As I'm reaching end of this video, you may ask, what is my conclusion? It is twofold. In one hand, if you can access to your PC Junior, it is really a nice computer, but it has two problems. First of all, it is slow. The second one, there are no software really supporting its features. So do I like it? I really like this small computer. It is kind of special one. But if you ask if I recommend it to anyone, well, if you are a collector, yes. If you just want to play around, no. I hope you enjoyed my video. I would like to close it with something which is really showing the bright side of PC Junior and wish you a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>